Welcome back to Machinist Made. This is going to be part two of two of machining the Titan 10M. So when we left off, we completely came in here and we machined this side of the part by facing it, doing a little bit of 2D adaptive, contouring the profile of the part, drilling both sets of holes, and coming in here and back chamfering the ISO grid. So in this video, we're going to work on this side of the part. But the first thing that we need to do is actually jump into design and turn off these threads. So down here in your timeline, this thread right here, if you right click and suppress, it turns this thread off. Then I can come in here and go back to manufacture and see they are gone. So I can jump into setup. So I'm going to come into model orientation ZX. I'm going to select this as the top of my part. I know. And then I'm going to flip this back this way. And then I'm going to go to is the changes from model to stock. One thing you need to be careful with is to make sure your position is dead center of your pilot hole you drilled from the other side. Either way is fine. But this is the way that I'm going to do it. I'm going to use a point in space off of the part. Then the next thing that I'm going to do is come in here to my programming and I'm going to call this 8010 because this would be the second program. Program comment, Titan 10M. Whoop, turn my caps lock off. Titan 10M S2. I'm going to change this to G55 because this is the second operation of this part. And I'm simply going to click OK. Again, if you want to get rid of the machine, just turn the little eyeball off. Now we can start coming in here and making this part from start to finish. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut these pockets on the outside and counter bore them and finish them. Remember, we drilled them quarter inch. These through holes are actually 260, not 250. So I'm going to come in and do these pockets. I'm going to do all this outside work first. So I'm going to go into 2D Adaptive. Tool that I'm going to use is a quarter inch end mill. So flat end mill, milling tools, there's my quarter inch. Aluminum roughing, select that feeds and speeds. I'm going to come in here, I'm going to select this contour, this contour, both of these contours and select OK. There's really not much I need to change in this. Um, it's automatically going to bring in good enough settings. 47 thousandths, that's about right. Stock to leave. I will change that to 10 thousandths. Again, I'll turn smoothing and feed optimization on, but with this tool, it's not going to matter with such a small cut. Select OK. It, it's not going to change the time of it. Then I'll come in with that same tool with a 2D contour. I'll select this contour and the bottom of the hole. There's such a small contour that it's not going to overload the tool. Select OK. And there they are. Doesn't look like it did the middle one. Go back edit. And the reason is is cause lead in and lead out was turned off. And now there they go. Lead in and lead out can be kind of pesky at times. Now the next thing that I need to do is I'm going to cut the 3D contour. Some people would do the pockets first, but I'm going to do the 3D contour. So I'm actually going to go in here to 3D Adaptive and use Scallop. The tool that I'm going to use is a quarter inch ball nose end mill. So again, under milling tools, ball nose, not ball nose, ball nose, quarter inch ball nose, or you could do half inch as well. We'll do half inch, something most people actually have. I'm going to change this to aluminum finishing because remember we're ball tracking. So this is a finishing operation. Mash select, go into our geometry. And the only thing I have to do is select 
a boundary box. So I'm going to select that boundary and now it's going to do everything within that boundary. You can turn rest machining on a lot of other features but you don't need to. Then I'm going to go into my passes and we're probably going to change the step over. Yeah, step over set at 75 thousandths. That's a lot. Um, I want my kerf to be a lot smaller than that. So I'm going to change this to about 20, yeah, 20 thousandths. Again, I'm, I'm going to turn smoothing on. Again, one thousandths. Feed optimization for this, I really don't need it. And I'm going to select OK. Now, scallop works a little bit different than some other 3D profiling, but this is uh, going to work just fine. It's also going to cut my chamfer as well. So keep that in mind. It's going to cut my chamfer and everything. And I'm going to come back here and edit because it's not running off the edge. And what I mean by that, let me show you before I change it. It's not actually running off the edge of the part. So it's not cutting chamfers here and here. So I want to change that. So go back into scallop, edit, turn my model back on so it's not look like I'm just playing in the space. Go into my geometry, additional offsets, and change this to 50 thousand, it's not a half inch. And now we are running off the edge. Just a little bit. And 50 thousand doesn't look like it's actually gonna do it. So let me go back and edit that. Change this to a hundred thousandths. And what I want to do, I want to see this toolpath wrap off the edge just a little bit. There we go. All right. Keep in mind these sides actually won't be there because this part is two size. Remember we actually did that up here in our contour. So now a couple things that I need to do. Obviously I need to come in here and machine all of these ISO grid pattern out. So I will do that. So I'm gonna go into 2D pocket, select the bottom of this pocket, go into linking. Here's my helix that I want. The tool that I'm gonna use is that quarter inch end mill from before that tool six. I am going to turn aluminum roughing on, mash select, and keep in mind this will be a through hole. I can change that by going to my heights and going to my bottom heights and just adding 50 thousandths. So my shavings will clear through the bottom so I won't get a lot of chip packing. Change my stock to leave to zero. I want this to be a one and done. Typical ISO grids don't have that high of a tolerance. They they do, but they have a typical higher tolerance than your general machining stuff, but they don't have a tenth tolerance. They're usually a couple thousandths. They're just lightning holes to make the part lighter, but keep its strength intact. And then I'm just gonna click OK. So what you're gonna see is it's going to helix it way down all the way to the bottom and I can change this right here and I will in just a second. But there it is. Simple as that. You'll just do this uh, for like every hole. So right click, edit. I am going to go into my heights tab. My feed height, I don't want top height. I want model top. And click OK. It will drop that down to the lowest height possible. And unfortunately, you're kind of stuck with that. So I can right click, go in and select every single one of these. And this is as monotonous as it looks. Now, if you wanted to, you could do your scallop operation last. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, just whatever you want to do. I would rather knock all this material off before I came in here with my pocket. 
but that's just me. So we can right click, simulate, and there's our 2D adaptive coming in. I do have one spot right here that it looks like it's trying to uh, crash at. Let's see what that actually looks like. Okay, that crash is actually the point in which this ball end mill is entering into the cut. More than likely that'll be fine. I don't see a problem with that. Looks like it's doing it another two times throughout the, the sequence. Uh, not too worried about that, to be honest with you. Should be fine. The way scallop works, it picks a point and it works out from that point. And you'll notice the further this end mill goes, the deeper it kind of gets into the materials on the sides. The ball end mills that I have are four full flute ball end mills. They're not tipped like lollipop style. They are full flute, so they should be fine. So I shouldn't have any worry with uh, excessive chip load on the side. Again, this tool is only stepping over like 25 thousandths at a time. It should be more than more than robust enough to handle that kind of a chip load, even at full depth. But again, like always, I hope you like and subscribe. Make sure you leave a comment, like the video, and hope to see you back here. Have a good one. One quick thing to mention, but one quick thing to mention is to make sure you uh, actually tap these holes um, like I forgot to. And if you're worried about that little crash blip, what you can actually do is drag your scallop to the bottom operation and it gets completely rid of that crash mark that you've seen before. So if we go back and simulate, you'll see that crash mark. It shows one there, but it, it's not going to hit anything. If you wanted to tap these holes, you can go up here to drill. We're looking for a 1032, so we're going to go into tap right hand. We'll go into hole making tools. And then a 1032, I don't even bother typing it in because it's right here. Select that tool, and then you can select these seven holes. Go to our heights tab and our hole bottom. We don't actually want to go all the way down. We're actually going to be about 400 thousandths. I think, no, it's 300 thousandths from the bottom. And you just click OK. And the machine automatically knows this is a tap. So it sets everything for you. It's going to set your 500 RPM, 24.8709 feed per minute, or whatever the tap revolution is, 1 divided by 32 will give you the uh, threads per inch. So again, hope you like and subscribe. Even I screw up. Have a good day.